Gentlemen, sad day, sad day. There's nothing to talk about, but we're here anyway. I mean, you know, we're gonna put on a show somehow, don't we? Well, really what kind of BS? Is. What kind of BS top five are we gonna be doing today, man? <laughs> yeah, what kind of list are you gonna have us doing this time? I don't know. I don't know. Let's let's rank. Let's rank other BR YouTubers. You wanna do that? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, we are running super late, only about two hours and nine minutes later than usual. So I know it's really late for some of you cats out there. Thank you so much for hanging out, waiting for us to get the show started. I think we should start the show. Let's go. It's all my fault. It's AJ's fault. This is PSVR Gamescast Live. We film live every single Monday, West Day, and Two Wise Friday. Although, with all of you guys here, I have no effing idea what day of the week it is right now. It could be any day. That's right. It's Wednesday. My name is Brian Paul from this channel right here. To my right is Miles Dyer from Miles Dyer Official and YouTube.com slash Miles. To his right, sorry, I'm not going to let you guys talk, is AJ from The Underground PSVR. Underground, and on the far right hand side of the screen is Wes Dillon from Virtual Strangers. Guys, the links to everybody's uh, everybody's channel is in the description below. So make sure you click the link, spread the love, and join all of those channels. Subscribe to all those channels. We're gonna have tons and tons of PSVR two coverage from now till whenever that thing dies. Uh, real quick, uh, apparently me memberships, YouTube memberships are now live. Uh, th things are happening. We're, we're going to get rewards and everything else uh, all figured out sort of later because obviously there's some PSDR, PSVR 2 launch chaos going on right now. But in the meantime, you guys are joining anyway. So thank you very much. Uh, and uh, just make sure you join us over on Discord as well. Click the link in the description. That's where the PSVR 2 conversation happens 24-7. Darth Vader, the game cat in the chat with a $2 tip says, so crisp, so clear. Village is great. It's true. Uh, guys, we have a lot to talk about. Um, and, uh, and, and Miles, unfortunately, we've already talked to you. So we're going to skip you for now. Uh, we're going to move right. It's all right. I'm just sorting out my credit card, Brian, because I'm just signing up for membership for the channel. So you guys carry on. Oh, well then. I guess that's the thing. We're going to move right down the line. <laughs> and then we'll bounce back here a little bit. Uh, AJ. Uh, very, very curious, my friend. Uh, you got you got your PSVR two a little bit later in the day, uh, and that's why we're doing this a little bit later so that you had a chance to play PSVR two. Man, is it everything you ever hoped for? Possibly. No, uh, well, Brian. I'm sad to hear that. <laughs> it's more. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, I can't believe it's real right now. Like it doesn't feel real to me yet. It hasn't even sunk in. Um, you know, like you said, I spent, I did a nine. I just got off a nine-hour live stream or something, and I think I spent about one hour actually playing uh, PSVR two, um, and it just doesn't feel real yet. So. But uh, but I'm very, very excited. And I just want to say, uh, you know, congratulations to all of us and screw everybody else. Everybody out there. <laughs> Happy PSVR 2 launch day, baby. Yeah. Uh, Wes, I, don't, I, I, don't, I haven't been following uh, as closely with you. I know you, you got yours a little bit earlier than AJ. Uh, what's, what, what was your story today? Uh, yeah, man, I, I'll, a lot, I'll, I'll echo a lot of what AJ just said. It does seem a bit dreamlike. I mean, we, we made it. It's Q1 2023. The day has finally come. And I don't know, we've been in waiting mode for so long. It still feels like we're waiting, kind of, even though it's right here. Yeah. Um, but no, man, it's amazing. I'm so happy uh, that, that the next era is finally upon us. And I'm so happy for you guys because... Unlike myself, who's kind of been bouncing around and playing a lot of PC stuff to kind of get, tide me over, you guys have really done hard time waiting on this uh, th this new platform to emerge. Uh, so I got to imagine that it must be a pretty big shock to your senses getting in this thing and finally experiencing some high fidelity VR. It's a huge sigh of relief, I think, uh, because it, it was very possible that this thing could have come out and been like, oh, oh. 
we kind of bet on the wrong horse. This thing isn't very impressive. Uh, and I'm just so, so happy to, to be able to say uh, that it's, it's really everything I ever wanted it to be. I can't, I can't, I can't even put into words. I tried to during my live stream today. I tried to put into words just how amazing Gran Turismo Seven is, uh, but I don't. I don't. I don't know if if words can convey that or 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 my ridiculous smile that I had on my face that entire time. I didn't. I didn't even want to move on to another game. I just want everybody to be like, hey, let's let's hang out for the next ten hours and just just race. Miles, I could see it. I sorry. I, I could see it all over you. I'm I'm sorry to speak over you. I could see it. it you did. It really wasn't so much about what you said. It was how you were saying it. And you didn't say much. You were kind of at a loss for words while I was watching. And um, probably a bigger smile than I've ever seen on your face. So uh, the the uh, the joy, you know, was emanating from you. We, we all felt it. Well, my, uh, Wes, I will say, just, you know, on, on that point, it's been rough, man. It's been rough, you know, like the, the last, even the last year and a half of PSVR 1 has been rough. Uh, the waiting for PSVR 2, the naysayers, the the just kind of like, I when people are like, oh, PSVR 2 is going to suck and blah, 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 this or that, whatever. Like, you don't, you can't defend your, you can't defend the PSVR 2 from that because we didn't have it, right? We had no idea. Maybe they're right. Maybe it's going to suck. Maybe, maybe there's not going to be any support. Maybe, maybe we're all going to put this thing on. And, and, so, and so you just have to be like, man, I, I, I hope they're wrong. And I'm, I'm just so happy that today uh, everybody's PSVR 2 headshot showed up and we, we got to find out that, that they were wrong and that we got to uh, take this giant, giant leap forward uh, in VR history. This is, this is such a huge, huge leap forward that I don't, I don't think any amount of preparation uh, could have prepared me for what happened today. Uh, and, and, and maybe you guys too. I don't know. Um, Miles, we're, we're going right down the line here. And so, so you are next. Um, you've had your headset for a while. What have, Brian, what have you been up to? <laughs> have, have you gotten to play some don't, other games today? Oh no. Don't you miss this? <laughs> don't you miss this? I never want to have to hold this up ever again. Honestly, like I wanted to do it for a video, but it was so stressful picking this up off the floor. Yeah. Like my, uh, my aim controllers on the floor, but don't we miss this, Brian, the breakout box and, and every, don't we, don't we want to go back to that? You look like a verge <laughs> thumbnail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, no, it, it's been amazing. And, um, a lot of people were saying, you know, why are you so excited about launch day when you've had it for, you know, several days? And the truth is, a part of VR that I love is the social experience. It's sharing what you care about, hearing what other people's experiences are. Mm -hmm. And then there's the multiplayer. Like today, I've got to dive into multiplayer. I've played After the Fall. I've played Demio. Um, GT7, although I got to play it uh, with flat screeners yesterday, I'm looking forward to playing it with other VR streamers um hopefully tonight uh, and, and tomorrow um but yeah i've i've dived into many many games and it's really exciting to enter an era with you with aj with west with the community where i feel like i'm on an equal peg in now where i'm not playing catch up with titles like you know this is a new beginning there are some things that have had upgrades and There'll be certain games that I'll be looking to you guys for, you know, maybe Song in the Smoke and games that you've spent a lot of time with that have seen the upgrades. But, like, this is just such an exciting time. And um, what I've been really blown away by today is there are so many friends of mine and, like, gamers who haven't been VR gamers before and, and some of my friends who are casual gamers who have done photos saying, I've got a PSVR too. And even, like, some of, you know... Um, my fellow like UK PlayStation influencer friends who are normally, you know, maybe they just do um, Soulsborne's games, you know, they're all about flat screen games. They've got PSVR 2, they're sharing their videos. And because it's just a single cable that goes into the console and it's so easy and you don't have to make excuses for the hardware, which is what we've all had to do for six years, um, because it's so intuitive. Um, this is such an exciting time for virtual reality and makes it even more important uh, that we get to be a part and the heart of one of the best PSVR... No, sorry, the best PSVR communities uh, in, in the world. So, yeah, exciting times. Agreed, agreed. All right, I want to get into some serious stories here. Uh, 
Uh, AJ, talk to me. You, you and I have been uh, probably covering this beat longer than anybody. Uh, so I want to, I want to hear your story from beginning to end. Uh, talk to me about uh, when this thing showed up. Talk to me about the first thing you streamed. Talk to me about any the setup process. I don't give a fuck, man. I just want to hear your story because I was busy doing my own thing today and like. I, the whole time in my stream, I kept asking people, what's happening with AJ? Has AJ gotten his? And my, and my chat was so backed up. It was like 30 minutes behind that. I, <laughs> even when I was done streaming, I had no idea if you'd gotten your headset yet. So fill me in on the story, man. I need to hear this for the first time. We haven't had a chance to talk. Let's talk now. Great, man. Uh, you know, yeah, I, I, got, um, I started streaming at about 11 o'clock, I think, uh, with, the, with anticipating, hoping that it was going to get here by like one and you by that point by one o'clock you actually got your headset and then i had to wait another like five hours for it to get here to be fair it did say before 7 p.m so i was kind of prepared for it mm -hmm. but that was like a worst case scenario um so i ended up basically live streaming hanging out with all the cats like for like seven eight hours I was I was giving them shout outs whenever their headset arrived and yes. everything. It was let me just say that this is a day that I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish was make this a day that I will never forget. And I can certainly say that this is a day that I will never, ever forget. Um, but if we fast forward through a lot of stuff uh, <laughs> when it got here, um, Julie and I did an unboxing for the first time ever. Uh, she joined me on camera. And we both unboxed our, our things. We did it live. It was really, really fun and exciting. And then, of course, uh, I did the setup process. And I did, dude, I just did everything live. You, you know, like the, the kind of like meme where it's like, we'll do it live. Yeah. Like, we'll do it live. Where it's like, just it doesn't matter how much of a train wreck it could become or whatever it is. It was like, no, we're just doing this live. And, and that's what it is. And so it was a very natural, uh, awesome experience live stream. And when Miles was just talking about it, uh, you know, talking about the cables and stuff right now, dude, I mean, the hardware stuff like was definitely the easiest part of the setup. I mean, it was like, okay, you, you, you take everything out of the box and then you you plug this in you pl you plug in the charger you put the controllers on it you plug in the headset to the ps5 and boom you're done and that was it that that literally took i think like under a minute to like be ready to start playing vr yeah no i was i was very happy with that too man absolutely um it's it, the, the, my my biggest problem was that i was rushing Right, because I was like, okay, you know, like the, I had I had a stream set up for noon um, for the last seventy five days. Ever since we started the countdown, uh, I just had like this placeholder stream set up, and I was like, am I gonna get to, am I gonna get this for noon? And uh, and, and I just it just wasn't happening, man. Like I, I didn't get it until after that, and then uh, and then the setup process was like it wasn't complicated, but man, I was trying to rush through it and just be like, yeah, 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 pushing the button, just like let's go, 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 and. Uh, and so, so I, I didn't get to just like kind of take my time and enjoy the setup process because I was like, we just need to start this thing. We just need to like, let's get the PSVR 2 generation. Like we're kicking this thing off right now. Like no unboxing. We're just going to dive right into it. Um, what game did you start with, AJ? So I started with Gran Turismo 7. Um, and it was funny because during, during my live stream, you know, we were still waiting and I happened to pull up your stream. <laughs> so we kind of were watching your stream uh, when, at the beginning, maybe the first five minutes, ten minutes. Um, and, man, your your reaction to playing Gran Turismo 7, I mean, the first thing I noticed was, like, good God, his car is fast as fuck. <laughs> um, and, like, and you're just, your energy, your reaction was was priceless. We were having a lot of fun, kind of uh, mystery science th uh, theatering the, th the hell out of it. Nice. Um, and, and we were just having a grand old time. And then, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I started with Gran Turismo 7, man. And I do feel like I skipped because, like you said, there was this little bit of element of, like, okay, I, I want to savor this moment, but at the same time, like we got to get things going. We yeah. got to get things going. I'll worry about technical things that I messed up, you know, any setup stuff that I skipped or needed to do. I'll worry about that later. Um, 
and I just wanted to start jumping into games. And yeah, it was Gran Turismo 7 um, using the wheel. And man, I mean, immediately it was just like, this is what I had dreamed of, basically. Like full AAA games in VR. And, you know, I think I played, I raced about like four or five different courses. Um, there there are some things that I, I was like um, uncertain about. So, so I have to spend more time. There was a lot of people asking a lot of questions. Of and I was like, look. I've been playing for five minutes. <laughs> like, like I'm, I'm sorry. Like I, I will give you uh, all the opinions I can, but it's like knowing that I kind of skipped a lot of processes that I would usually go through a lot of setup that I would usually go through. I was like, look right now I need to be reserved and just enjoy the moment. And so, um, what I can say is I, I was still absolutely blown away, uh, despite skipping probably a hundred steps that I needed to do first. Uh, I was absolutely blown away and just like ready to do this for like a very long time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely the same. As you said, my, my reaction to Grant, I felt, I felt ridiculous, right? Because I, I felt like the double rainbow guy or something. I felt like you playing no man's sky. I was like, this doesn't <laughs> like, as the words were coming out of my mouth, as I, as, as I, as I realized I couldn't stop smiling, like it just felt, I was like, I was like, I was like no one's going to believe that this is real because this is not a typical Brian Paul reaction. Usually I'm like doom and gloom and, and like miserable and emo as fuck. And, and and here I am just giddy. Like it's Christmas morning and I'm 12 years old all over again. I got a Sega Genesis. Like, I mean, it is, it was crazy sirens on my end. I, I couldn't, I could not believe how great it felt to be playing my, my first PSVR two game in the rig at the wheel. G29 feels amazing. Uh, and, and I hadn't even used the sense controllers yet. I had like drawn a space in my room and then put him down. It was like, I got to, I got to race. Uh, was not expecting this to be my first game ended up being my first game. And I'm so happy that it was, um, Wes. Right. Have you played Gran Turismo? Nope. <laughs> no, I didn't play Gran Turismo and I'll tell you why. Um, that game, uh, there's so much game there and there's so much to it. I knew that if I chose that, as my one to start that that would be the only game really that I had any time to play between the time I got my headset and showtime. So what, what we're going to do uh, on my channel, we're going to cover Gran Turismo next week. Uh, there just isn't enough time to, to really get a good impression of it. I don't think that's fair. A few hours. So uh, we're going to do that one next week. All right. I'm going to circle back around to you, Miles, uh, to you, Wes. I don't know why I keep doing this. Circle around back back around to you, West, because I want to stick on Gran Turismo for a second. Miles, you didn't. Uh, you've had your you've had your PSVR two headset for a while, but the patch for Gran Turismo only went live what yesterday, and so this yes, is new to yes, you as am. well, right? And so, and I, I want I want to be real clear about something here. If you if you talk to any reviewers uh, who who got their headset early or have been reviewing this thing and talking about launch titles, no one played this thing in VR until yesterday, right? And so. I, this was a mind-blowing moment. Miles, now that you've gotten a chance to play it, do you agree with me that it's a mind-blowing moment? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, the word giddy that you used is exactly the one I use again and again. And I do look up the definition of giddy, and it often means like a ne there's a no negative connotation to it. But no, giddy also just means like you, you've just got all these emotions and you're like... You just feel like you're losing your mind. Um, I just shared in the chat a link to um, I posted the the clip on Twitter of when I first did it, nice. um, and the strange genius of what they've done on GT Seven is I fired it up, I downloaded the patch, I knew it was all going to be in cinema mode, all the um, uh, all the menus and stuff like that. I get into the race and it's doing the countdown and it's still flat screen, so I pause the game and I'm like, have I? open up the wrong one and it's this whole thing like as aj was alluding to if you stress out about things when you're doing live streams i was miserable in the morning when i'm um, trying to get my live stream sorted i'll get to it a, a, another time i just spent a lot of money i went to the apple store and then half the shit i bought wasn't actually needed mm -hmm. and you and then you just have to make do exactly as aj says you know we need to just get on with this and someone in the chat told me oh no it's flat screen for all of it so i then literally go back and the video on twitter shows me going back to it with the countdown and then it just goes from the flat screen to you're in the car and I couldn't believe it and I did exactly what Brian did which is as you do the first turning your body's going 
turn and you feel yourself getting pushed into the side of the car like i genuinely thought i was like gonna go out the the car and then eventually like actually no there is no g-force it's all anticipation mm -hmm. and it just is mind-blowing um and then every time you do a race it's the flat screen and so what happens is it does the countdown and you're like oh i know i know what vr's like i know what this is going to be like and as soon as it goes from that screen to you being in it Every time, it's just a mind-blowing experience. And so um, for anyone that's got GT7, um, if you go to the museum, uh, you go to Asia Oceana, go to the Gran Turismo store and the showroom, there's a go-kart that is 10,000 credits. Um, that's what um, the game cats were telling me to do on the, on, on the morning. Nice. Uh, spend 10,000 credits. Get on a go kart. Um, we'll do some races on GT7. It's what I did on the live stream. I just said, hey, everyone join doing go-karting where you're that close to the road and like as you're going around the turnings you can see the grooves in the tarmac like it's just unbelievable well i'm gonna always correct myself here i say oh this is so unreal this is so unbelievable they're the wrong words to use it's totally believable and it's totally realistic which is why it's so freaking amazing so um yeah you've got you got to try it if you have if you have psvr2 you've got to try this one Hundred percent, and I and I can't wait. I still haven't tried the uh, the go karts in VR. Oh, I've, I've done it in uh, I've done it on the flat screen, and it felt amazing in the flat screen. And I was like, I can't wait to do this in VR. And there were so many things to try today that I just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, a couple mm -hmm. tips, and then I want to hear Wes's uh, story. I want to know the first game you played, so keep that in mind, Wes, because I'm about to ask you that in just a second. Joshua Roskart, thank you so much for the five dollar tip. Salvador with the five dollar tip says, shout out to Fred and Steve, the real MVPs, running up to PSVR two launch. <laughs> <laughs> Red, Red Rover, Red Rover, send Joe Grover right over the effing game cap with $2 tip says all the cables and power supplies gone, clean. Yes, it's really nice. <laughs> I, I, I kind of, I said I wasn't going to put away my PSVR 1. I think I'm going to put away my PSVR 1. Me too, man. Yep, it's time. Neo wise. Not yet, but very soon. I, I think I'm doing it now. Uh, like during, while you guys are talking, I'm just going to walk over there and just fucking <laughs> push it all into the closet. Neo wise with Canadian $10 tip says, first time ever in VR in Horizon. I was curious if there's a way to make the picture clearer. I set the IPD with the settings, but I'm not sure if it's supposed to be crystal clear or a bit fuzzy. Any tips? Uh, there's, there's so I mean, there's so many things I, 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 I kind of want to say, right? I mean, like, you got to make sure that it's resting on your head the right way, right? I heard people in my chat while I was streaming say, oh, it's not as comfortable as PSVR 1. And I, and I thought the same thing, right, when I put it on because, like, the, the lenses were, like, on my nose and I couldn't, like, figure out, like, why isn't this sitting the way my PSVR 1 did? And eventually, I was like, oh, there it is. That's that's where it belongs. And, I got, and you have to adjust a little bit to get to sweet spot. Make sure you're looking at the lenses in just the right place, and then boom, it's a, it's a pretty decently sized sweet spot. And then you got to use the IPD slider on top of your the little wheel on top of your uh, headset, right? And so there are people complaining about certain things, and I'm like, you might be more sensitive to some of this stuff than I am, but also there's a million reasons why it might not look perfect uh, on your first go. I don't know if you guys have any uh, additional advice. It's similar to the PSVR one for me. And this was something I was, I was getting asked a lot of questions about graphics, about clarity. And I was really afraid to answer them because again, I don't like to answer things when I'm not 100% sure. Right. Um, and so I felt like, like when I said, I skipped uh, a lot of the process. I don't, I feel like I was kind of playing without that sweet spot a little bit. So like sometimes I'd like adjust it while I was playing and it would feel amazing or look amazing. And then sometimes it wasn't looking as good as I thought it would. Um, it's kind of normal with a new headset, it seems. And, and it just you have to get a feel for it. You have to give it a little bit of time. That's why like some people, uh, you know, well, anyways, that that's all I'll say for now is like I you definitely know that this headset can look amazing. Um, and there were times where I was playing where it did. Um, but, uh, but you do have to, Excuse I didn't, I have to get more time with it to really know. So I, I'd, I'd love to hear from like miles or Wes as well. Um, because you know, miles has had a lot more time with it more time to get adjusted. But I remember a similar thing with PSVR one where like, it was my first VR headset and it took me even a couple days, I think, to kind of really understand like how it needs to feel and, and find that sweet spot. Like you said. 
I was, yeah, just on that. And I wanted to go before Wes because I'm actually going to tee him up because I actually had this conversation with Wes on the phone uh, before it arrived for him and when I had it. And Oh, look at you two hanging was... out without me. It's so, <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> At least sometimes. To be honest, the reason I called him was, we haven't spoken in, like, <laughs> months. <laughs> like, um, and, uh, yeah, I um, was saying that uh, it's, like, day two of playing it, and I feel like the wow factor has gone a bit on some of these games. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, am I cleaning it properly? And But what I thought it mainly was, and, and Wes was alluding to this as well, is brains are very adaptive when you try a new piece of kit and it takes you to a whole nother level it's going to wow you but very quickly you're going to become accustomed to it right. uh and it becomes the new normal um but that's not to take away and so i've gone back to it again and again call of the mountain things like that and there are moments where i'm like no this is really clear and other times not so much and it's all about the the positioning and i don't know what it is um some people have told me this headset requires a lot more work to get the sweet spot um but something that i would really wish sony would implement in a future um like patch is having to unless there's a quicker way of doing it i've missed it having to go into settings accessories playstation vr2 to adjust the the width of the lenses and also the eye tracking. I wish that if you just, you know, twisted the wheel for the lens distance, if you did it, so if you started doing it, it would bring that menu up. And then on that menu, there was a button for eye tracking. So you could just quickly tweak it because sometimes I've realized when just moving the headset around, the lenses have actually moved just a slight bit. And so um, that we, we often think, you know, over a couple of days, oh, I've, I've had it set. I don't need to think about it. Every time it's a new day, not necessarily the eye tracking component, but just I, I find go into that uh, lens distance adjustment. And if you have to significantly move it, then just do the eye tracking. It's a bit of an inconvenience, but it will mean that the rest of the day you'll have a better better experience. But uh, yeah, Wes, your your thoughts on clarity and... Well, uh, a couple of things. First of all, I, I guess, I don't know if it's uh, where I've had so much experience with other headsets or, or what have you. I, I actually didn't have much trouble at all staying right in the zone. Like I took my headset on and off a bunch of times today. I only had to set it the one time. Every time after that, that I put it on, everything was just perfectly where it needed to be and perfectly crisp and clear. So I, we all have different faces. We all have different eyes and, and different experience levels with these things. So obviously over time, people are going to become more accustomed to it and, and learn how to stay in uh, the sweet spot. Uh, as they operate but uh, to go back to the original question with this person asking about horizon specifically uh and, and brian you might remember i said this coming out of um out of ces distant objects and this distant viewpoints in that game they do have this kind of softness to them it isn't super sharp and, and clear now don't get me wrong it's beautiful and near field to midfield uh, objects are just super resolute and super crisp, right. but there is kind of like a, a, you know, a haze, a softness to to distant objects in that game, and that might be what this person's referring to. Although I will will say that uh, everything you guys said is correct, and and you might want to play around a little bit with the uh, the settings to make sure that you, your everything is set optimally for your eyes. I mean, I would say a good test would be go in and look at your hands and, and everything that's real close up. And if all of that looks super crisp and clear and sharp, then then you're good. Like, right, you found a good IPD. You found a good uh, whatever. You found a good placement on your head. You Maybe you are looking at the sweet spot. And then when you look out at the distance and you see, oh, okay, yeah, the, that's just that's just the game, right? Um, but yeah, because it definitely can look extremely, extremely sharp. Uh, but can I just reiterate? Can I just make it clear, no. just from seeing some of the chat discussions, what I said? <laughs> I, I'm going ahead with it anyway. Okay. <laughs> is the 95% the of my experience, it's looked great and it's looked crisp. Right. Like it's just the you know over many many hours, there'll be times you have to yeah. just you know and go play kayak, it. right? If like you you want to do yes. you want a litmus test to see if like everything looks fucking clear in your headset, go play kayak VR. <laughs> Holy crap! I didn't play that game for very long, but that was convincing, right? Everything yeah. was I, super I, crisp. I, I, I could not agree more. <laughs> like I was super blown away uh, by the way that Kayak VR looked, and like, yeah, that was 
you know, that was kind of like, I realized that, yeah, it is true. Like this is my ocean descent uh, or uh, original like um, London heist kind of experience. Like kayak VR turned out to be such a better first uh, kind of uh, foray into um, PSVR 2 than I could have ever imagined. Like I knew it was going to be good, like visually, but it really, it's a really great way to kick things off and is very impressive visually. Um, <laughs> and I was very happy with it. And I was like, man, like, like I could really play around with this for a very long time. I was, I was paddling as fast as I could and then hitting the brakes and, and like turning, I was trying to stick my head underwater. I was running into a log that was crossing and <laughs> testing the force feedback and the headset, the, the way the water physics are, it's a great display of so many things on a technical level um, that I think it's a, uh, it's a wonderful first thing to experience. And yeah, anybody that picked that up uh, for their, you know, already or are planning to pick it up, I cannot recommend it enough because even in the first five, 10 minutes I played it, I was completely sold and was like, this is why I want PSVR 2, is for stuff like this, this experience. Uh, one comment, three tips, then I, then we are getting back to Wes's first game. I don't even know what it is. You got Cold Yogurt in the <laughs> chat said, this was sharper than my three, uh, 3080 Ti plus Valve Index SMH. This HMD is a big value. I think that's a, that's a really good takeaway. Unintended Studios with the $10 tip says, started with RE8. Played Gran Turismo 7 after the controllers died. <laughs> Did the intro to Horizon. Tried playing Zenith and some Pavlov and Pistol Whip. Feel like a kid in a candy shop. Blew all my expectations away. Man, I have so much to talk about. So much stuff that I want to dissect from your tip. But we have to move on to Joshua Roskart's uh, second tip of the day. $2 tip. It was everything you guys said it was and more. Uh, and then, of course, Emily Baxter, the cartoony witch game kitten with a $5 tip says, tip provided by money I save by not buying cartoony games. Can't wait till the storm <laughs> passes so I can get my delivery. F you, Mother Nature. Yeah, so many people had snow today and, and we're just patiently being, please, please, please show up. Sorry, Emily. Hopefully your shows up soon. Um, okay, Wes, at long last, I want to hear what what's the, what was your setup process like? What was the first game you played? Give, give me the full Wes Dillon Virtual Strangers experience. All right, so the full the if, if you if we're gonna go uh, back, perhaps we'd better start uh, from the beginning. So when I woke up today, um, I actually set up a brand new PS5 console because oh. uh, uh, the my kids got one for Christmas. They got a digital edition for Christmas, um, but the uh, you know I have a subscription to GameFly, so all of the really good games that we have to play are come on discs. So whenever they got their digital edition for Christmas, I just took my physical one uh, out of my bedroom and let them have that. And for, uh, what, two months now, this uh, this digital edition has been sitting in my floor waiting for PSVR 2. So I, when I got up this morning, I literally had to set up a brand new console, put my, uh, my accounts on it. As you know, there are many. Mm -hmm. <laughs> put my accounts over on it and then download some games. And I downloaded, a, a, I don't know, probably six or eight games onto it. Um, and then at that point, uh, Brian's going live. Brian's got his. So I, I'm, I'm watching Brian uh, play Gran Turismo and uh, having a blast at it. And I just can't wait. Uh, it, there was a point during the day that I had uh, uh, an appointment online, like an online meeting. So literally, like, people in my house are all asleep and I've got these big heavy headphones on. I'm watching my door with, with one eye, but I can't hear anything. And so I'm super nervous. Uh, but we got through that. Um, and then right around the time, like I said, Brian, that, that you switched off of Gran Turismo and went into whatever it was that you were about to play, that's when, uh, the truck pulled in Nice. and, uh, and my headset finally got here. So you, you missed uh, me cowering in fear at the resident evil village <laughs> tutorial. <laughs> tutorial. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did miss that. Anyway, we, we, we got it all set up. I already had games installed for it. Um, ready to go um so i, I set it up and it, i mean it, it's easy to set the hardware up there is a bit of uh stuff to go through on the digital end like software to set it up the first time that you set it up uh and unlike you guys i didn't try to rush through it i i i understand that days like today 
only come once or twice in, in a generation, you know. So I wanted to take my time and really savor everything. So I, I, I went through the entire setup, didn't skip any of it. And then it became time to, to play the game, finally time to play a game. And um, so my intention was to go straight for Village because that's what I'm most excited for out of all the launch games. I wanted to play Village first. Uh, but my wife started talking to me when I was in the headset and I accidentally clicked on Call of the Mountain. Um, so that booted in. And when it, when I got into it, I was like, well, you know what? Fine. We'll, we'll, we'll really quickly look at Call of the Mountain just to see if it's exactly how I remember. Now I'll be able to do it with, with the, you know, full locomotion and smooth turning and all that stuff enabled anyway. We'll, we'll give it a couple of minutes. Um, but by the time I got through like the eye tracking and, and got everything set up, um, and I could hear, you know, the, the thing fades to black and you can hear the game audio just kind of fade in and you know what's about to happen. So at that point, you know, my wife's sitting next to me. She's giddy. She's never tried this on before. So I let her have it first. So she got to do the, uh, the boat ride part. Uh, I let her do that. And, um, I went and grabbed some lunch while she was uh, playing Horizon. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Please tell then, me this uh, ends with you playing PSVR 2. <laughs> just, yeah. like, just, yeah. just people keep coming in the room. You're like, you have a go. Yeah. And then uh, it's yeah. us live. <laughs> but, um, no, you're right. You're right. Um, but uh, after she went through the, uh, through the boat ride, I, I messed around in Horizon for uh, just a few minutes and then went to what I originally intended to go into, which was RE8 Village. And that's where the majority of my gameplay has uh, been spent today. I remember that. Can I ask straight off West, how did it compare to the mod that you played? Like as a, you know, you played, I know it's going to be better, but yeah. Well, well, the mod, the mod is amazing. And if anyone hears, uh, here's what I'm about to say. Don't, don't mistake that for me putting down the mod. The mod is amazing. And if you don't have PSVR two, it's certainly uh, a, a, a a very playable version of the game you shouldn't wait you should go ahead and play it now with that said um it, it's head and shoulders above the mod it, it there's much more uh clarity visually like there's some aliasing and things when you're playing on pc uh everything's pretty crystal clear uh in the psvr2 headset but beyond that the vr interactions are head and shoulders above uh what you were getting from this kind of emulated motion controllers that the mod put in um what really stuck out stuck out to me and this is a recurring theme uh for my experience today no matter what title that i played um the haptics and the adaptive triggers are just a game changer with in terms of immersion and then and when i was in resident evil uh, 8 uh, and the, there's like a little firing range in the tutorial the minute i picked up these guns and started firing firing them that's when it dawned on me just how different this platform is going to be. Uh, not just this game, but all the games that come to this platform, whether they be ports from existing uh, platforms or, or new titles. Uh, the adaptive triggers and haptics in both the controllers and the headset were probably the most profound thing. As awesome as the screens were and, and bright and colorful, really the, the tactile feel of the... Uh, the headset and the controllers were really what stuck out to me today. And Village was kind of my first, you know, realization of that. What's interesting that you said is, uh, I mean, is comparing it, of course, to the PC mod is uh, is interesting because uh, the, the most recent trailer, which I'm not showing because everyone's like, there's a lot of spoilers in that. So this is like one of the earliest trailers they ever revealed. We'll just stick with this one for the time being. Um, I, there were actually moments during Village that I was like, oh, this, this is not VRAF. Right, it was like I there. There are points where, just like the beginning of Resident Evil Seven, where you have to like crouch under something, and so you push a button to crouch under something, and the game takes over and, and, and does it for you. Uh, and then there's other times where you know you're you're clicking a button when you don't think you should, and then like you know at the very beginning of the game, you're holding a baby. Sorry guys, that's not a spoiler. It's like literally five minutes in, and and it's just Ugh. and it all just seems like oh, this wasn't really designed for VR, right? Like you can, it doesn't feel quite you know quite as listen. polished as hey we listen to I'm, I'm not complaining i just want to make sure everyone has their expectations set properly right it is by far way more vraf way more 
way more VR integrations than Biohazard ever gave us, right? And I'm sure it's, you know, as far as that stuff's concerned, light years ahead of the, uh, the awesome PC mod. Just saying, I want people to keep in mind, it's not like perfect, but it is really fucking cool. So in the, in the VR, in the PC VR mod for this game, when you hold that baby, you hold it by its foot and it's just kind of stuck to your hand and it really doesn't matter what you do. You, you just mishandle the baby. So again, comparatively it's VRAF, but yeah, I understand what you're saying. You can tell that it was a game that was designed for, uh, for, for flat players first. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I don't even know where to go with this. Uh, AJ, did you play any Village? I did not, actually. It was supposed to be something I played after Gamescast today. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, because I got my headset so late, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to get around to it tonight because I already streamed nine hours, and I think I'm done for the night after this uh, show. Um, <clears throat> that being said, I did, like I said, man, I was super impressed with uh, Kayak VR as a first uh as a first look at at, at psvr2 um <clears throat> i was super impressed with with gran turismo 7 um uh, there was little things that i was just like i mean i was like crashing because i was like sitting there like there'd be like another car next to me mm -hmm. and like the car looked so good or the interior of the car looked so good that i was just like I mean, I was like driving <clears throat> probably like a hundred miles an hour and I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> like, like this just looks incredible. And I, and then I look up and then I crash. Yeah. Um, had the exact same experience. I, yeah. Like I didn't even care. I mean, you know, the first thing I did was, was go on one of those like, um, like NASCAR style tracks and, and you're, you're, you look over and your car is like sideways and you just feel it man that's the thing is like you really get a great feel for for racing and and everything and it, it feels so good it looks really good um definitely some similarities with with gran turismo sport as you guys maybe know i i played a lot of gran turismo sport um so i haven't played the 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 go-kart yet in on psvr2 but i do remember i can only imagine because playing the go-kart on PSVR one on Gran Turismo Sport was one of the most immersive things like ever because you're so close to the asphalt and it just feels the way it's the way it's all about the way it feels. But um, and then uh, I did check out Song in the Smoke as well, uh, which was awesome. And it was like, hey man, like I'm back in this game that I absolutely love. It looks better. Um, it feels better. And the first thing I tried to do, I had like one mission, which was find a waterfall and stick my head <laughs> under it. And so like, you know, that's that's the thing that I really, really love um, about this right off the bat. Besides the visual fidelity and things, I'm really interested and curious to see not only um, <clears throat> not only the adaptive triggers, the haptics, things like that, but the games that do it best. And I think that's why I really was impressed with Kayak VR was because like, like, you know, <clears throat> I'm sitting there hitting a beach ball in the, in the pool area and like, I'm hitting it. I'm, I'm grabbing the flamingo and flipping it around. Um, I'm splashing the water and like, they really paid attention to the things that I was really um, interested in, which was like every last little detail of physics of haptics, every use of it, trying to use it to their advantage. But um, but yeah, jumped into a song in the smoke and that was super awesome. And like I said, stuck my head under the waterfall and of course got the headset rumble. Um, and, and it felt great. And again, it's too early to tell for me. Unfortunately, I didn't get enough time to play as much as I wanted to today mm -hmm. because I really want to take my time. I really want to make sure I'm got everything set up on my end properly. Um, and it felt like, yeah, a lot of these next gen features, it was like I got glimpses of them, but I didn't get like a consistent feel for them. Um, and I don't know, have enough data just yet to know if that was something on my end or if like, hey, you know, not everything is going to be 100 percent perfect all the time. Uh, it's it's funny you bring up Song in the Smoke because uh, 
Song and Smoke is one of those game, a game I dropped into near the end of my stream, just because I was just trying to hit up a few extra games, and, and immediately I was like, oh man, I forgot how to play this game. I don't know how to jump in that game. I, I don't. I couldn't figure out the option to just allow myself to push a button and jump. Uh, I couldn't either. Okay, good. So I don't. I don't. I, don't, I, feel, I was feeling kind of dumb. I was like, it's going to be in these options somewhere. I'm sure someone in the chat, you know, 20 minutes from now, will be yelling at me, telling me it's right there. Why didn't you push it? Um, and, and, and funnily enough, funnily, whenever when I when I jumped into it, I was like, this guy. This kind of looks like the PSVR version, the PSVR one version. But it's it's the sort of thing that now that I've played the PSVR two upgrade. If I tried to go back to the PSVR, I just know that would be like, holy crap, I thought that these two things looked the same, right? Because it's so crisp and clear and they've added so many like little details that it just looks really nice. But like it's it's not going to blow your mind, I don't think. Right? And, and I'm curious to see how many of the other remasters, I'm, I'm currently downloading uh, the, uh, the PSVR 2 version of After the Fall and Pistol Whip right now for my Australian account uh, to test those out after the stream. Uh, I, and I have a very strong feeling it's going to be very similar, right? I'm going to be like, oh yeah, this looks pretty much the same. But if I went, if I ever went back to the old PSVR one version, it would be a huge wake up call and go, no, this thing was, this thing was definitely much lower resolution. I think I've gotten very, very used to this high resolution very quickly and been like, oh, that's just how life is now. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting experiment. Like you guys should take, at the very least, take a month away, if if not longer before you go back to your old headset, but we should make it a point, uh, all of us, to switch back at some point in a month or two, maybe three months down the road, and just see... I'm definitely going to switch back in a month, if you know what I mean. Yeah, j j just to see um, what Miles was kind of alluding to earlier, just how much uh, of the blanks that your mind was, your brain was filling in for you when you were playing on the older uh, hardware. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you say that, Wes, because um, when going through the um, capture footage I've got on my PS5, um, I was actually looking at the footage of um, Survive. Uh, that it was like the, one of the last games I played on PSVR. And you're seeing it with the fisheye lens and the quality. It looked like a PS1 game. Uh, and that's not, that's not shade at Survive in particular. I was looking actually at the live streams on PSVR without parole of the PSVR era. And it's just already, it's like, how did we even live like this? But at the time, it looked great because the um, the capture footage when you're live streaming is remarkable. Um, the, the picture it allows you to have. To my concern, actually, because when I was live streaming and I was doing pass-through moments and grabbing stuff off my table, I didn't mind people seeing my living room. But I think there was a few documents maybe on my uh, on my desk. And then when I saw it actually on the stream, I was like, shit that's actually really crystal clear <laughs> like <laughs> making sure i hadn't been uh leaving anything away but a, a question i wanted to ask um uh wes and um and uh, brian because you played re8 um one of the things i first noticed um when diving into kayak vr was when in the swimming pool i got giddy because of the sunlight coming through and then the blacks as well so um when it comes to re8 because actually when I looked back at footage, I played the uh, Jurassic World game. And some of the footage, I was like, wow, that room was really dark. But in VR, it's just really good at dealing with darkness. Um, comparing RE8 to RE7, just talk about you know the, 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 the blacks and the darkness and, and maybe how that looks compared to the previous headset. Was it, was it significantly noticeable or is it just a new normal? You want to take this one, Wes? Sure. Well, in terms of the, the color vibrancy and the blacks, the blacks have always been excellent in, in PSVR. The big difference now versus before with regards to darks and blacks is before the Mura was a little more noticeable. Like now, there, there's still some Mura there, but you really have to look for it. And if you're not looking for it, a lot of people aren't going to even be able to, to see it. Uh, that's really the biggest difference in darks. Now the color vibrancy, you can you can tell they, it was really good on PSVR. It's great now with these HDR s screens, and uh, this was something not just specifically in Village, but uh, across my entire experience that uh, was very noticeable to me. Um, Which is also probably helped by the fact that if you look down now in your headset, you can't see light coming up through. Like they, they've right. really done well to you know keep everything blocked out um 
And I think just as a broader point to all the game cats, because in the lead up to this, there have been so many questions about, you know, um, the screen door effect, you know, um, what is this like? What is that? The objective of a good VR headset is that you don't notice what it's doing. So when people say, do you notice a screen door effect? Well, yeah, when I'm wearing the headset, if I'm looking for the pixels, I can kind of see them. But when I'm gaming, I don't. And so very often the time when we're asked about, you know, does it feel comfortable and things like all legitimate questions. But the point is, as an overall headset, when you're wearing it, it is incredible how much of it you don't even think about because it's so good at hiding it. And uh, when Wes was talking about um, the haptics when at the shooting range in um, RE8, um, for me, there was a few moments. Um, but one in particular was when I went into After the Fall. And I went through the tutorial bit and I was like, eh, okay. And then I went into the um, uh, the shooting range and I picked up a gun. And my concern has always been, oh, I'm going to miss the aim controller. Like, what is it going to be like? Because, you know, with move controllers, holding a gun with two hands, it was just like this all the time. The feeling of the guns and holding them with both hands, mm. incredible. And I played a full level with a friend earlier of After the Fall. And it's a game that I always liked i liked the potential of it more than the game itself i'm having a really good time with it now and the guns feel awesome i actually am now playing it with the um advanced reload mode because again due to the move controllers i felt there was too much you know risk of error for things that was some are going to be my fault but also the fact that the the move controllers were all over the place now with the great tracking just like you know re releasing the magazine grabbing a new one putting it in pulling back um, it all feels so good. So there are so many games I, I still can't wait to um, experience those haptics. Dude, I will say, man, to your point, like something I literally thought about while playing was like, I don't even feel that there's a headset on me right now. Yep. Did you y'all thought that too? Yeah. Like, yeah. I was like, I was like, I feel nothing. <laughs> like, right. It just, it's just, I'm in VR and there's no weight. There's no, like, it's so light. It blocks out like, 99.8 percent of the of the black of the any light that comes through um and yeah it like literally felt like there was nothing on my head it was ridiculous yeah did uh did, did any of you um play with the earbuds just out of curiosity yep. like i that's all i've been using is the earbuds and i'm you know, as I had alluded to earlier people shouldn't be sleeping on these people like want to criticize uh you know this headset for being $550 and not having built in over the year speakers. Uh, but this is far superior to, to like the Oculus strap audio that so many of the, the headsets these days have. Um, I found the, uh, the, the, uh, the earbuds to be very serviceable. Yeah. When I was, they were good. You go. When I was walking around in Resident Evil Village, uh, especially at the beginning, you know, they're, they're intentionally just trying to, you know, amp you up and, and, and say there's something out there, you know, but and so rocks are falling here and there. And man, like the 3D audio was so good during those moments like that. I was just like, this is this is really all I need. And just as AJ said uh, about the headset itself, like you don't feel like you're wearing the headset and with earbuds in. You don't really feel like because they're so small and they're comfy. You don't really feel like you're wearing those either. And so that all just kind of takes that friction away that we always talk about and just gives you another reason to believe that you're really there. And again, this was not the scariest, uh, the scariest moments of things I've ever played in VR, but it was certainly some of the most convincing. I've heard actually you y'all two are the first two that I've heard say anything good about the earbuds, but, <laughs> but really the complaints that I've heard about them have been about them falling out. It's, I haven't really, nobody's been able to tell me, really about the quality of them because nobody seems to be able to keep them in their ears for very long so <laughs> um I, you know that's that's the only thing like i've heard people hate the earbuds but it's nothing regarding the quality it's all about them and the way they sit in your ears and, and like some people are like i don't know how the, if i'm wearing them right i don't know what's going on i can't get them to fit i can't get them to stay in my ears um but it's nice to know that at least maybe they're good quality like d design at least yeah, I, I, I thought they were great quality. For me, I was always just not sure if I was 
like get sticking them far enough into my ears. They weren't, they just didn't feel right for me. However, the thing I was concerned about was, am I going to go back to the 3D Pulse headphones? Because do I want these clunky headphones on my head? And with what AJ was saying about, you know, not feeling the headset is there, you know, all these questions you say, do you feel there's a headset? Yeah, if you're in the headset and you think about it, you're going to feel it. A good VR headset takes your attention away from that and into the world that you're in. And even with the big 3D Pulse headphones, um, I've been surprised. Like, that's my go-to now. And actually, I'm really comfortable with them as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be alarmed. So I, I think if you can use the in-ears, do them because I use them. They did sound great. It's just I was constantly just like adjusting them. And like, I do wear in-ear monitors, so I'm used to using them. Maybe I just need different fittings. But the 3D Pulse headphones um, and maybe other... Um, I know this gets asked a lot. You can use any Bluetooth headphones with it, right? Or not? Only if it's got a USB... Um, I wouldn't dongle. I wouldn't want to say because I yeah. haven't tested. And I don't want anybody going out there being like, Brian yeah. said they, you could use any Bluetooth headphones. Yeah. And I just don't want to promise that because I don't know. So what was that, Brian? Any any headphones? Yeah, any Bluetooth <laughs> headphones? Yeah, they all work fine. Uh, real quick, the most guys, expensive ones. Okay, I want to make sure that we uh, I want to make sure we get caught up on tips here before we move too far ahead. Sure's uh, Sure's Cotton City with the two dollar tip says, if I import, God, I hope one of you guys knows the answer to this. If I import three D MOV files, would software play it back? I like don't even know how lost. to respond to 3D that. Three D movie files would software play it back? The, I don't the, think the you sort, know. Is that what he's talking about? Asking, with? They're asking about the sort of thing that people used to do with uh, Little Star. Oh, like side load kind of. Yeah, yeah, side so, so load video files. From what I've spoken with with developers, Sony has their USB stick stuff on lockdown. I mean, like really hard. Uh, there was like one thing that I think that works, but um, yeah, a lot of people have been asking about like the 3D, the ability to play 3D movies, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff on, on PSVR 2. And, and it's like, well, the PS5 doesn't. So, you know, the PS5 doesn't. So it, it probably doesn't as well. And, and the answer has been pretty much no, it doesn't play 3D stuff. Right. And for, because the PS5 doesn't. And for right now, like that's that's the answer is 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 very unlikely where you know you're gonna be able to play a bunch of 3D stuff. But I think the now now we have a device that can play 3D stuff, right? Like that is built for like no, no one, very few people out there have like 3D TVs. But we but now there's a whole new Sony market, new PlayStation market of people who have PSVR twos, and it would really be great if they could implement that feature back so we could play our 3d blu-ray movies watch them in psvr too um dizzy no, for you the uh, two i can sorry uh, sorry I, I can say definitively that uh at, at least as of right now 3d blu-ray has been tested and does not work okay um i think it was a vr oasis or someone tried that out and it just doesn't work now that i don't know if that's because the software needs to be updated or if the drive in the physical edition just isn't capable of 3d blu-ray uh but as of right now it does not work okay i think it has something to do with the laser that's in the hardware i thought it was just a licensing thing that like sony hadn't like there updated might. their didn't want to pay for it with the playstation 5 yet there was no reason for it i don't know that was just a there might be a software workaround for it but yeah. you know as far as i know there's no hardware solution for it as of right now so it would have to be some kind of software workaround <clears throat> Dizzy for you with the two dollar tip says, "What Sony franchise do you want to see most in VR?" Oh man, there's so many. Can we aren't say which Sony franchise we don't want? <laughs> like, <laughs> that might, be, might be easier. Uh, I, I, easy. Shadow of the Colossus. Kill Zone. Off the top uh, of my head. Hmm. Infamous. Nice. Last of Us, uh, of course. Oh yeah! Oh uh, damn it! Yeah. Twist, Twisted Metal. <laughs> yeah, for real. Twisted Metal would be great too. Uh, um, I've got a I've got a super long list, but we need to move on. Mutant Fox with the five dollar yeah. tip says, "I have money banked on my GameStop trade card. Heartbroken, it's not in retail yet. Hopefully, it's not too long. So flipping hyped. It is really strange that this thing is out, and if you want to buy one, in so many parts of the world, you have to go to direct.playstation.com." It's strange. People are going to be watching this and go, God, they 
they, they love this thing. I want, how do I get one right now? And they like go to their Target or Walmart or GameStop and it's just not there. And they're like, well, I got to go online and order it and hopefully it comes in a couple of days or tomorrow or whatever. I don't know, man. It's just not, it, it's, it's weird. They need to figure this shit out. Canada is the only place that has physical or that has uh, PSVR 2s at retailers, in particular Walmart is basically all I've heard, maybe Amazon. Um, I went to my, my local Walmart uh, when I went and got my Pulse headsets because I went and finally picked one of those up. And uh, they actually had PS5s. So, yeah. you know, obviously, I think the... I think this is a clear sign that they're doing this this way on purpose to limit scalpers, uh, to have people buy directly from them. Um, and then eventually that may open up, but they clearly think that this is a good strategy for them uh, from a financial point of view to be in control and uh, take ownership of the sales. Because not only does it go, come to them directly, but it prevents... Uh, breaches like they had with the PS5 and scalpers and stuff. Yeah. Uh, got a couple more tips, and I want to get back to the hardware itself um, and some of the features. Uh, GB with the five dollar tip says cinema defaults to a smaller size. So go to accessories, PSVR2, screen sc size slider. I just discovered it. Hooray, everyone! Is screen door in Mura, but fine. So you can make your cinema mode much bigger, which is nice. Uh, Shen Miazo with the 10 quid says PSA synth riders looks amazing on PSVR two true blacks, vibrant colors in so smooth. I can't wait to jump into that. And the multiplayer. Yes. Multiplayer. Yeah. Gorillas. The gorillas DLC came out today, right? Are we able to stream that? I mean, if you don't care Probably about not. the video being <laughs> visible in like 95 <laughs> countries, yeah. you can stream maybe I think you can stream like three songs maybe <laughs> is how the copyright stuff usually works with record labels. If you break three, then I think it's shut down for good. Uh, Sergeant Frosty with the $2 tip sent us a snowman. Thanks, Sergeant Frosty. And Indie Soul with the $2 tip says the shotgun in Resident Evil 8 made me feel giddy. A shotgun, which brings us to the haptics. Dude, it really did feel amazing. Like it, the firing range. Right, just like again, tutorial stuff here in in village, you know, is it's teaching you how to load each weapon and, and and how to fire it, and you know, it asks you which your dominant eye is, and so like it's actually using the correct eye. So like when you when you lift it up to aim, you look through the correct eye that you've set as your dominant oh, eye, oh. and it all just like lines up. It all works well, and then you pull that trigger, and it's like thunderous. Like, right, you feel it in your hands and then the headset uh, rumbles and like, like the whole, your whole body shakes. I'm not, I'm not a gun person. I'm not a, I'm not, I don't fire weapons, right? But like, I can only imagine that something with that much force shakes your body when you fire it. Like, I, do, are any of you guys gun guys? Fire shotguns uh, and absolutely. stuff? Absolutely. Yeah, shotgun. If you're not holding it, will fly out of your hands. If you don't, <laughs> if you shoot it, you're not holding it tight enough. Wes probably knows. He's a Kentucky boy, yeah. or, yeah. or a Virginia boy, or something. Where are you? <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, I'm from Kentucky. Oh, you're, yeah, you're right. yeah, I'm, I'm from Kentucky. Yeah. And yes, yeah, I got out, uh, I got out to the mountains and shooting in Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a gun owner, and uh, you're right. And you know, um, haptics aside, which were amazing, really the 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 trigger pull was what really stood out to me like the, the the haptics were awesome too but the the fact that that uh the the, the the trigger the trigger pulls vary from from gun to gun and it feels different it feels more realistic inside the headset uh and this is me like i played ghost of tabor last night which is a game that uh you know is kind of built around realism but nothing i did in that game compared in terms of realism to the stuff that I played today, strictly based on, on the haptics and the trigger pull. It was, it was really, again, when I said earlier that, that that was kind of the thing that stuck out to me most today. Yeah. That, that was the thing that really stuck out to me most was kind of the, the whole tactile element. It was uh, very impressive. <sighs> yeah. The adaptive trigger has been interesting. I got to say, um, it's been, it's been fun trying to see um, sort of like how different games have implemented these things and how you can kind of tell that developers are still kind of feeling their way through this. Um, 
because I, I jumped into uh, I jumped into Zenith quickly just to kind of see what it looked like, um, and in the triggers, like they they got some they get they're spongy, right? Like they, mm. they get some pull on them, and you're like, this doesn't even seem right. Like I, I, if I'm selecting things from a menu, it's like. Fruh. Like why? Why is there sponginess in my menu selection? Uh, but then, but then when you pull out your, you know, your your weapons and you charge them up, and then that feels right. So I just feel like they need to change the adaptive triggers for what you're doing. Um, also, by the way, Zenith looks real nice. Great draw distance. I'm so jealous you got to play that. Don't be too jealous. It, yeah. I, it was it was surprisingly not very polished. Like surface level wow this looks a whole lot better but then you start moving around and, and it gets real framey like it, you start, the frame rate starts chugging a little bit and uh mm. it's totally playable but I'm just, i was just expecting a little bit more expecting this to be like a super smooth uh mm. version of of the game and you know they'll, they'll be patching it but it was just it's surprising as all. Well. it's interesting that you say that because one of the games i was looking forward to playing the most had kind of a similar issue Ooh. And it was unfortunately No Man's Sky. Oh my goodness! Um, yeah, and I kind of I was prepared for this because I think with big games like this, big either MMOs or or just No Man's Sky's history in particular, sometimes they need a little bit extra time. Like sometimes they get yeah they get the launch out they get it they get it going. Um, but then it has a couple issues and needs a you know another week or two, and I was I was a little disappointed with with uh, my first impression of No Man's Sky, and it's just it it had some glitches, it had some you know it's like you said the polish, that's the problem with some with with uh, with with this one as well, was it was I could tell like it's it's almost there. Like there were times that it was good, like if not great, but it was also like, well, okay, they got this out the door, but it's super unpolished right now. Hmm. And it's a little disappointing because I was really excited about this. You know, this No Man's Sky is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was a little disappointing, but so I don't know if this is going to be the case with with how many cases we're going to see like this with remasters or or games that we're you know we're like assuming it's just going to be perfect off the bat. It's going to be super polished. It's going to be super smooth. Um, there's there's a good chance that we we're going to run into something else. So luckily, you know, I had things like uh, Gran Turismo Seven, like Kayak VR Mirage, and like Song in the Smoke. Uh, which, on the contrary, were very polished, very smooth, um, very ready for this moment. And No Man's Sky definitely did not seem like it. I mean, um, it, it seemed like it was missing haptics, adaptive triggers, all these features they were talking about, great big graphical boost. Um, and I think they'll get there, but I think it needs a little bit more time. Gotcha. Yeah, it sounds That's like the, uh, the nice. chat disagrees with you. I mean, it sounds like the chat agrees with you. Uh, Johnny B in the chat says No Man's Sky was the biggest disappointment today. Not much of a difference between the PSVR 1 version on PS5 graphics-wise. And uh, Wow. Yeah, uh, right below that. Ixa, it's Ixa. like it's, It feels like something went wrong, kind of. Yeah. Like, it, that's what it feels like. And it might be a quick patch that they do tomorrow in response to it. You never yeah. know. Because yeah. I've been speaking with the devs of Demio. Um, I've had a few issues with it. Um, and my friend I was playing with, he was having issues on his side as well. And it's just some kind of head tracking issue where literally when moving around, it will do the thing where it sort of freezes for a bit. Um, although I played with another game cat earlier who didn't have the issues. So I've just sent him video clips. And whenever you send video clips, it never really captures exactly what you're experiencing. And they're looking into it, and you know this sometimes just happens at launch. But I do find it interesting how I think, especially with a new piece of hardware, there are going to be games that surprise you pleasantly, and some that disappoint. And some of it is to do with anticipation, because I am ready to jump into No Man's Sky and be blown away. And clearly, I need to not say that it won't be great, but like it's I need not there to, yet. It will get not, there. It's yeah. not there yet. Maybe just and that's the yet. thing. Yeah, we need to we need to wait and be patient because this is this is new hardware uh, and there are growing pains with going with that. Um, the the only thing I was going to say back to Zenith, uh, Brian, was that um, flying felt amazing. It did. Uh, yeah. 
I, that was the first really thing I did. Good. I found the biggest fucking cliff I could find. Oh. Ran and jumped off and just. I was like, this is great. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. But the but the only thing was I, I logged in. I think I was like an hour of five. It was like three in the morning for me last night playing it. And uh, and I think it was Looper, the underground game cat, was there and nice. helping me out. Because they have this new pat, uh, pet thing where you can catch them in like Pokeballs or stuff. It was cool. It's but so as great. I went into <laughs> When I went into the lobby area, there was an event going on with this giant monster. And there must have been like 40 players. And it's that whole manic, which I remember and I used to love in Zenith. But like at three in the morning, I was like, do you know what? I can't process this right now. <laughs> like I need, to, especially with haptics and like the visuals. I'm like, this looks like an absolute shit show. And I'll come back and do this when I'm more prepared. And I do think, especially when a new bit of hardware comes out, we're having to dive in and try different games. There are certain games where we need to give it some time. So like Cities VR, I'm going to do a special stream for it because I want to take my time with it. Yeah. Um, a lot of you in the chat have been asking about my impressions of RE8. Um, the reason I've put it on hold is because uh, my cat. Saturday main, and, and I'm a scary cat, but on Saturday's live stream, it's going to be exclusively uh, RE8. So if you want to come see me shit myself, uh, that will be when it's happening. So I am going to dedicate like that as my first main live stream. But yeah, there's a lot of games. No Man's Sky would be one I'd want to spend a lot of time in. Um, I did play Townsman, um, and although that's a game that you spend a lot of time in, I, I played it for an hour, had a really good time with that. Um, but there's just so many multiplayer games, and like GT7, I just want to get back to the racetracks with people. And um, really small thing about GT7, actually, why it's on my mind. I tested with a friend. He was playing on flat screen, so I don't know if it will be different when you're, you've got multiple people playing in VR, but I pulled up right alongside him, and I was like looking at him, shaking my head and that. And he was watching the live stream. And he says, you couldn't see me moving my head. Now, I wonder if that will be different when you've got multiple people in VR. It's not the end of the world if not. But I kind of like the idea that as you're trying to overtake and you're like, you know, constantly looking at each right, other right. with that pressure, that would just be an added bit of um, immersion that I would, I, I would really, really like. So it's cool, like, finding all these little things with all the different games, the things that work, the things that could be improved. But... Overall, it's um, it's a really, really promising start. Speaking of things that worked and don't work, and things that we're curious about, I was a little concerned about tracking uh, before I, before I got my headset in my hands because various reports from various places. I mean, like you know, Wes, you had problems with tracking over at CES, but you know that obviously uh, there were reasons for that. And then we kind of heard reports from random other people that say, oh, you know, I have tracking issues here and there. Tracking's not perfect. Uh, I tried to break the tracking today on stream, off stream. I did everything that I could. I tried to do things while I wasn't looking, like, <laughs> like while I didn't think the cameras could see what I was doing. I couldn't break the tracking no matter what I did. And I don't know if it's because I have, uh, you know, some decent lighting in here, uh, but... Uh, uh, did you guys experience any tracking issues or, or, or did I just get super fucking lucky? No, tracking was solid. And, and um, I specifically put this to the test uh, in the final title, which I played, which was the Light Brigade. Uh, the Light Brigade, which I have been playing, uh, I played it initially on my HP Reverb G2. And I had to switch off of my G2 and move to my Oculus Rift uh, because of, and it's a very minor thing, but there was a little bit of controller occlusion. And when you're, you're shooting long distance with a rifle with iron sights, even the smallest little bit of play in the tracking will be an issue. So since I knew that small variances in tracking would be an issue in that game, I specifically went into that game to test the controller tracking out. And it was flawless. It was absolutely perfect. I had no issues with it. Nice. I tried to break the eye tracking and I couldn't. I was, <laughs> you know, you know, when you first do that initial setup mm -hmm. and like, um, you know, I didn't get the thing like perfect, but like, you know, like I said, I was kind of, because I knew Gamescast, I had to get ready for Gamescast and was trying to get through as much as I can. I was kind of on a, on a, um, on the clock here, uh, again, racing against the timer here, uh, but so, but I did spend a minute trying to get rid of the eye track because this is my first experience with eye tracking, as it probably is all of us. Same. Um, and you know, I love the setup that they have. It, it feels very thorough. It feels very, um, 
like it gives you a lot of assistance doing it. And, you know, it's got the picture where it shows your eyes and, and if you close your eyes, it'll blink, it'll wink and stuff. And then it's got all the dots around the circle. And like, it wants you to highlight them if you can, or, or kind of test or calibrate it, how well it is. And, and yeah, I was sitting there like, <laughs> like like going as fast as i could and and looking around i was trying to like you know juke it uh for lack of a better word and i couldn't and uh it was pretty sweet awesome stuff and well, same, same, same goes do. for the hand tracking i i have been able to catch the eye tracking and what you have to do to catch it is you have to in one movement turn your head one way while you turn yes. your eyes the other if you if you look left and turn your eyes right you can catch the the uh, foveated rendering moving. I'm not that I've coordinated. That I'm trying. This is like <laughs> I have to practice this. Well, that is important. And what I noticed is like there were times where I felt like I almost got it, but it seemed like yeah. the reason it didn't it, it the what was happening was I wasn't fully looking at it, which is why. And that's probably has something to do with with when you're moving your head, you're turning your head, and you're looking the other way. It's maybe because your eye hasn't completely focused on that spot yet and it knows, um, but it could be something else as well. It could be just the, the too much for it to handle. Dude, I, I just really thought that, that – I thought that foveated rendering was going to be noticeable. I thought that eye tracking was going to be noticeable. I thought when you combine those two things that I was always going to kind of see in my peripheral vision – some kind <laughs> of lower resolution stuff going on, right? Or that like when I moved my eyes, it would take a split second for, for the eye tracking to recognize that and for it to get caught up. Gran Turismo was so flawless and looked so good that I couldn't, I was in disbelief that foveated rendering was actually in play or that eye tracking was turned on. The whole, it just seemed like the entire image, the entire field of view was just crystal clear. And I, I, it was it was a shocking first game to play because I was like, oh, this there's no way, there's no way, and like you know I, I you know I haven't played every game yet, but like but this one specifically, right off the bat, I was like if this is if this is a example of how PSVR two games are going to tackle phobia rendering and eye tracking uh, in conjunction with each other, then we are in for an awesome generation because I can't even recognize that it's happening. I mean, you're talking That's about it. like a quarter of a second delay at most yeah i'm not that i'm not that fast my brain doesn't work that fast we know this <laughs> yeah it's it's this is super early for the tech as well um and we're gonna see all the interesting ways like um switchback's gonna be brilliant um but um it's also with the social screen how well hidden it is as well um i i did have some game cats testing it um well they, they were just testing it on on their own accord and kept telling me when they noticed it um on gt7 was an example where they did and they said it was when i was driving and they said have a look at your um sat nav you know the sat nav display you have mm -hmm. and they said that as i look at the sat nav you can see it become a bit clearer so it's not as if it's blurry it's just that comparatively obviously i can't notice that um so you know like many of these things that we're talking about you're going to notice it if you look for it in certain context um the irony being that when you're looking for it with your actual eyeballs you're not going to notice it but mm -hmm. <laughs> uh you guys got uh, you guys got first impressions of the hardware. Like I mean, and I'll and I'll and I'll say what I mean by this. I feel like we went deep into hardware impressions. Uh, but when I pulled out the PSVR two headset, I was like, this feels really light to the point where I was like, this feels cheap. Uh, in in the sense controllers, I was like, this is just as like these are there's nothing in here, right? Uh, and I was concerned. I was like, I, I was like, you know, are these gonna feel cheap? Uh, but everything everything works with such a high level of quality that it immediately negated those thoughts that I was having. I was like, it's just all feels so lightweight that it, there's not, it doesn't feel like there's anything in here. Uh, and side note, I do love that you don't need knuckle straps because of the way the sense controllers are designed. You can just open your hands and they stay there. I was like, what? I didn't expect that to be a thing. All right. Sorry. The, the placement of the wrist straps that are like installed in there in the orbs or whatever, it's kind of weird. I think that actually, I think, you know, we've heard a lot of people talking about, um having difficulty finding where you know 
where to put their hand into the controller. And I like 99% blame that on the wrist straps and their the placement of them mm-hmm. because they seem a little strange where they, yeah. where they did. Once you get them on, they feel good. But getting into them, like if you took away the wrist straps, I feel like it would be like 75% easier to put on the controllers. Um, that being said, I I've already... Yeah, that being said, I'm already kind of figuring it out. I'm already getting a feel for it. It's really just a first time kind of thing that makes it difficult. But but yeah, the uh, the wrist strap placement of where they have it installed is is kind of weird. I, I'm going to take mine out. Um, I, I hear that if you twist them sideways, I, I haven't done this myself, but somebody said if you twist them sideways, you can pop them out. Uh, and and I am there's no way I'm never going to wear those wrist straps. So I'm, I, if I can find a reliable way to pop them out, no problem. I'm going to. You do don't it. need it. There's a freaking ring around your wrist, right? Like, <laughs> like I didn't even need them for the moves, and and that has nothing. Oh, so I God. don't. Uh, so with the with the orbs, I mean, I was literally sitting there during our unboxing. I put the orb on my hand, and I was like. And like nothing, like it didn't even move. You don't nothing need- until something. Oh. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> That's my. That'd be my worry. Um, something I, I I was um like cautious to talk about in um Discord chat earlier, but I think everyone here now has pretty much if they got their PSVR two, they've done the setup. But there was one. Well, the, the setup process when you take it out and you're plugging it in was an absolute joy to do. Um, I really, I really just thought it was just so seamless. It was exciting. The scanning of the room was amazing. And then there's that little moment, which again, I didn't want to talk about ahead of launch, which was where it comes up with PlayStation VR and there's the gold like dust around it and stuff like it that put the biggest smile on my face. That was like the closest feeling to when you play PlayStation worlds and you've got like the (laughs) thing coming down the corridor and stuff like that. And in that moment, I was just like. I just wish they did. I'm glad they did something like that. Like it was so small, but it just gave me that. I think it's like when you first set up your PS5 and you have that startup screen and the sound, like just something to make you feel like welcome. You know, this is this is it. Um, not just you know you do your setup and then you're on the UI screen, which was still great. It was it was nice to have that little touch. Yeah. Uh, a couple <coughs> of things that really kind of stuck, stuck, stuck up to me. <laughs> Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Um, <laughs> one was the lenses. Uh, you know, the, the lenses are are wider than I remember them being, uh, actually. And um, I don't know about you guys, but I I came into this expecting there to be a little bit more in terms of like God ray and glare, God rays and glare. Um, I seem to remember there being more in it f- during my demo. Than what I experienced today, it was hard to see any kind of God rays today. Now, there were a few instances where I saw some slight glare, you know, like a halo effect yeah. uh, around like uh, words and things. Yep. But like traditional God rays, I don't think I saw any today, which was kind of shocking, to be honest. All right, let me take care of a few more anyway. tips. I'm I'm not a god raised person. Like I hardly notice them. I guess I did notice them on Quest Two a little bit during some games. Yeah. Uh, I notice absolutely none here. Yep. Uh, Alhambra D cat allergic game cat with a five dollar tip says I live in Puerto Rico and I had to ship it to a friend's house in the states. It just got delivered and now I have to pay shipping to send it home. No. Oh. <laughs> uh, sorry, man, but at least you're getting it. I'm glad you found a workaround. Hey, Can't believe that. Yeah. They don't have a they don't have a solution for you in in Puerto Rico. Well, uh, good for you for finding a solution. Yeah, for real. Josh Zosky with the ten dollar tip says just taking a break from PSVR two to let you guys know that your channel and community are the biggest reason why I even picked up a PSVR two where I was borderline otherwise. Um, you hear that, Sony? No. Uh, <laughs> Josh has been around for a while, man. Appreciate you, dude. Yeah, big time. He's been around for a long time. Uh, like. Is it, and guys, if you want to be part of like you know the best community, like literally I've ever been uh, a part of or ever seen anywhere online, make sure you click the link in the description. Join our Discord. Uh, if, if you're excited about PSVR two, that is the place to hang out. Uh, it's nonstop, uh, and you'll find you'll 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 see all sorts of things happen there. Uh, we 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 found somebody today who destroyed their PSVR two before even using it. Uh, so don't use wet wipes. Or alcohol oh pipes my God. on your lenses uh, to clean them. 
Use microfiber cloths, right? Dry. Sorry, dry microfiber cloths. Yeah. They actually destroyed their headset. Yeah, like it, it, like I guess it broke like the eye tracking, and so it was just like oh. Um, so uh, so so you'll find you'll see all sorts of crazy shit happen in there, oh, right? And, and and so so it's 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 good stuff, it's bad stuff, but like it's it's the community all together. Um, so uh, so so come hang out with us. Um, Sorry, I can't get I, like. Oh my god! Right, I know, right? Oh, what a bad way to start. I, to oh, I don't mean that to rub it in. If they're, what I hope, like, like, but it's just like you wait that long for it. It's a big investment, and like it's a, like it's an honest mistake. Um, but oh my god! Uh, sad sadistic sea beast with the two New Zealand dollars said, "Did you enable the 120 FPS in the main PS5 settings?" Uh, I did not. Um, you dis I disabled it in the PS5 settings and then enabled it with the PSVR 2 headset. I was worried it was going to cut out my stream or something, but it seemed fine, I guess. Okay. I mean, I again, I, I kind of rushed through the setup and just like, but I was like, let's jump into a game and like turn the little dial and boom. And, and, I, was, and I was very, very happy with what I saw. There's so much I want to go back to and really dive into. I, I, I don't even. Yep. I don't even. Yeah, know this is this. more of a first impressions. I mean, there's so much we're going to dive into. There's a lot to to really dig deep in for sure uh c loss xp1 with the five dollar tip says long time fan thank you he says thank you for everything you do happy you guys have a psvr2 in your hands it's been a long wait but we're finally here that's the <sighs> biggest understatement of the day god it's been a long <laughs> and that was their first ever super chat as well so thank you yeah thank you very much um as uh before we call it a night uh there's i, I want to know if you guys played any maybe maybe some of the smaller games out there, maybe some of the, the games that haven't been getting as much attention as things like Resident Evil Village, as much as Gran Turismo, as much as Horizon Call of the Mountain. Are there any uh, little hidden gems in the launch lineup that, that we need to be paying closer attention to? There is one that was a pleasant surprise, um, which was Zombieland. Um, if you like Time Crisis, because I always think about like... Um, Blood and Truth, it was the sense of it's this middle ground, like not quite time crisis, but very cinematic. Like it's a cool game in its own right, but like we want, you know, and you've got Crisis Regade and things like that, but like a proper time crisis style game. Now, when I was streaming it, some people were going, oh, there's teleportation. Yeah, because you're in like a certain shooting area. You look at the next location, you jump and you jump and you jump. But I never played the original version. Um, but I've spoken to people that had, and they said it's a massive upgrade. The, the, the developers told me it was a massive upgrade. Um, I would just say, if you're not sure about it, like with all of our recommendations, like feel free to look at my stream. I've got timestamps there. It might not be your type of game. It might be. But what I like is it has a lot of character. I'm someone that actually never saw the movie, so I don't have that connection with it. Um, there's a lot of stuff to grind. There's like a shooting range with challenges. Um, there's upgrades for your weapons and perks. Um, there are high schools. There's lots of trophies to get. But what I also love is the amount of character in the level design. So I'll give you like one really specific example. One of the maps is uh, like a, a miniature golf course. And in one of the rooms, there's one of those big windmills. And in the bottom of the windmill where you'd normally putt through, there's a zombie trying to get out. And the windmill, as it's going round, it keeps hitting his head. So his head is just keep going like, uh, uh. Uh, and he just looks really annoyed you have to shoot him and kill him but like in every room there are just these like there's been a lot of care that's gone into the level design it's not just like we've created a cool room and now there are zombies running at you like there is that happening but like everything feels very uh purposeful and uh and yeah and so the reason i'm talking about it so much is you know i think i was victim to it as well of the idea of like this is a game that's been out for a while already how much is it going to be for like you know an upgrade for psvr 2 the devs told me that they had to rebuild it, you know, uh, from the ground up to take advantage of the features. And uh, it was the first game I, I played that had, like, guns and the haptics feel great. Um, so, yeah, if you're really into Time Crisis style arcade shooters, get involved with this for sure. So happy to hear that. Yeah, I, I haven't had a chance to get into this one. Uh, I actually played uh, <clears throat> one of the last games I played before Gamescast just to jump in and check it out and see what it looked like was... Uh, was true in pixels runner uh aj was talking up talking that up on uh on gamescast on monday and i was like well i gotta i gotta at least check this thing out and see uh you know see I, I, it's been sitting on my quest for so long it's like actually <laughs> embarrassing that i haven't had 
I haven't played it yet. Uh, <clears throat> it's very, very cool. Now, I have not made it far into this game at all, right? But but it's it's cool. You, you get, get to the first boss? And not even. <laughs> Not even okay. Like I, I went through the tutorial and I was like, "There's a lot to take in for for a game about uh, basically, you know, being uh, in the movie Akira." It's hard at first, right? It's hard at first. It's 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 mm-hmm. just like now now do this, now do this. This trigger does that. This trigger does that, and then hold this button to do that. And then it's, there's a lot to do, right? So it, if it looks like it's real simple that you're just like you know going down this this pathway and, and shooting everything, well, that's kind of the deal. But there's so many ways to go about it, uh, and and there's, 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 there's grenades and there's ways to lock on and there's specials. There's like there's power ups. So you got to watch your energy level. Everything. It's and it looks it looks super super crisp and clear in the headset. Uh, it's got a, it's, it's got a great look as you can tell from the uh, from the trailer here. And, uh, and it just feels good to play. Uh, I can't wait to get deeper into this one because uh, it, it just seems like it's going to be so much fun, um, you know, just just sh- shooting a bunch of stuff. And, and, and as AJ already alluded to, there's bosses. And I haven't even gotten to the first one. Uh, so, yeah, very, very big there's, fan of what I've played so far. There's new modes in that that I haven't tried as well. There's like a cruise mode and stuff and... Um, they also, I don't know if you n- noticed, but they have that, uh, the OST that I've been tweeting or I posted about this later or earlier and stuff that, uh, runner actually comes with an OST that has a, a visualizer with it that is PSVR two compatible. So I'm really, really excited. I don't know about you guys, but I love, I used to love like windows, uh, media player, like visualizer right. and, uh, Winamp and all that stuff. I used Winamp. to love to listen to music and, and just sit there and kind of zone out and watch, uh, watch the visualizer. So, um, I'm excited to, to check that out as well, but, but yeah, as for the game, I'm such a huge fan of that game for me. I didn't get a lot to play. I didn't get a chance to play a ton because I got my PSVR so late. Um, but, uh, I think kayak VR was definitely the biggest surprise for me today. And just, you know the graphical fidelity, the 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 technical. It's not just the graphics; it was kind of the physics as well. Yeah. I was very surprised, um, and and that is something you know. I mean, graphics and physics can go a long way, and I was very impressed. And I was like, well, I know a lot of people say this game doesn't have a lot of depth, but it's like, god damn, it's like you can spend a lot of time just playing with what's there that I feel like it offers a lot of value there. And um, and then it's also a pretty cheap price. And I was very impressed with that. Uh, an excellent, excellent PSVR 2 launch title for sure. Yeah. And that was made by three people, which still blows my mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't for Zing the Land Beyond, I'd be way more impressed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I was actually stunned. Uh, this was not something I played during my live stream. And I, and I, and I started it up afterwards. Uh, and, and this is one of those moments, Miles. You're saying, you know, like it, you get used to uh, the, the clarity in, in the in the visual fidelity very quickly. Um, I had taken a little break, went into Discord, hung out in voice chat, made some coffee, uh, and then I was like, all right, I'm going to go back and play some more PSVR two games before Gamescast. And I dropped into this, and I was like, I am fucking blown away all over again. Like, yes, it's just <laughs> so clear. It just looks amazing. Uh, and you're right, the, the, the physics, AJ. I mean, I had, I just tried to go straight into a race without doing the tutorial. Don't do that because, because it's very difficult, man. It's very difficult. Like you, you're just like, Oh, I'm just going to do this. And it's not like that at all. Like, I mean, there's, there's lots of different techniques to, to use with that or, and, um, and before, and before Brian. we go any further, before we go any further, we definitely need to stop the show for just a minute here <laughs> because, uh, Hold on, I, I gotta. I, gotta, I can't even actually see this tip. Norman Natori, Norman Natori, yeah, Jesus, and it was their first super chat. Norman Natori with <laughs> yeah, a no, right. five hundred dollar tip. I don't think I've ever seen a tip this big. This is thank you so much. Before I even read your tip, Norman Natori, biggest tip we've ever gotten. Been doing this for eight years. Thank you. I, now, now we'll read your tip. I don't even know what to say. Sony didn't throw you a bone, Brian. Happy PSVR 2 to you. Thank you for your hard work and dedication to the channel. Can't even imagine how much work is involved. We love you all. Keep up the good work. Thanks, man. Oh, yeah, no, Tori. Thank you. That's amazing. 
quite the generosity of this community is incredible and, and just to say brian the amount of game cats that not only have signed up for membership today to support the channel the amount of game cats that have been gifting memberships in batches of five and ten we haven't we especially at the beginning we weren't able to keep up so we'll definitely have to check out afterwards but like um yeah we we the reason we mentioned the love for this community again and again is because you literally make this what it is like we all talk about our stories of how we got involved and mine was because of this community and everything done so it's so amazing to like kick off this new era of vr gaming with everyone here together so yeah thank you yeah look at all the here, hearts here. in the chat this is very moving i, I will it's, it's been a, you know it's obviously been a tough uh it's tough year tough tough couple weeks tough couple months you name it man it's been tough um and uh and and, and i feel really really happy that psvr2 is so so mind-blowing that like it kind of pulled me out of my funk but like honestly that funk would have been so so much more difficult and and, and tough to get through if it wasn't for this community that i got amazing messages every single day of the last month from just random people that like you know, are the people who sit back, watch the show, and don't say a goddamn word, and they, and they all call themselves that. They say, "I'm one of those people that you mention," and it means so much that you took the time out. It's so easy to go to a channel and leave a fucking negative message and say, "You know, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about," but it takes a lot more thought. In like, I don't know, it takes a lot more thought to just send a message of positivity. It's harder to do the good th to do a good thing, <laughs> yeah, than it is to do a bad thing. Yeah. So, Norman and Tori, thank you very much. Really, really appreciate you. Um, just like we appreciate all the cats here. Um, we got to move. We got to. We got we to gotta hit up these other tips uh, before we get too far away from them. Um, Michael Deserto with the five dollars says, "When in Horizon Boat, I was stunned and dreamed of seeing Skyrim this beautifully in the right. pool and kayak. I yelped, Holy shit! Can't wait to play more.'" <laughs> Yep. Yep. I think I think we're all in the same boat as you, man. Like same <laughs> kayak, same fucking swimming pool. Literally. Yep. Uh, Onoro. How am I gonna screw this up? Oh no. Oh no. Rory in with a five dollar tip. It, it says it's a pair character emoji that's cheerfully blowing a party horn. That's the description that Notepad gave me. Chapulin Cat with a five dollar tip says, "Finally, my PSVR two has arrived. Talk about the last goddamn minute." Um. This is about his last minute. Let's go, Chaplin Cat. Right? Let's go. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Congratulations, man. And congratulations to everybody who received theirs. And congratulations to everybody who's going to be receiving theirs tomorrow. Um, it's awesome, man. It's great. You know, I had to wait a long time. It was really interesting. You know, you talk about how great this community is, man. It really is. Because <laughs> seven hours, I sat there waiting for my PSVR 2 headset and we had a phenomenal time. And there were some people coming in trying to be like, you know, downers, trying to be trolls, trying to be like, oh, yeah, this is what you get for waiting, blah, 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 not planning stuff out. I was like, dude, I was ready for this. Like, mm -hmm. I knew that if I didn't get my headset, then we'd just be chilling all <laughs> day long. And it was going to be awesome. And it was, man. And yeah, really, really a shout out to all the cats who hung out. I mean, literally, I don't think I went under 200 people watching all day long for seven hours without hours. a headset without a headset <laughs> just being like like god i'm so excited for this thing to get here and like and it was amazing man i had such a fun time like there was people coming in being like oh man i'm so sorry blah blah i was like dude don't be sorry i've been having a blast hanging out here all day like with with my friends and and the people that you know i i hang out with on a daily basis and uh you know you guys are all my closest friends so it's it was really super special um, and we, and we got the W cause we, we, we got to do the double unboxing with me and Julia, and then we got to play a little games and stuff. And then of course make it, uh, nine minutes late for games cast. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's, it's amazing. Lots of amazing stories today. And, uh, and yeah, thank you. Thank you to an amazing community. Um, and again, just a, a reminder while everybody's here still watching, all the links to everybody's channel. You know, Miles has his own thing on his channel. AJ does his own thing on his channel. Wes and his friends do not just PSVR, but all VR over there on Virtual Strangers mm -hmm. uh, on his channel. So please click all of those links in the description below. Subscribe to all of these guys' channels. Don't forget to subscribe to Without Pearl while you're at it. And also join us over on Discord where this conversation happens 24 seven. All right, a couple more tips. And then we're gonna wrap this thing up. 
Splinter Slots with the Canadian $5 tip says, is that faint blue spot just below eye level normal? Myself and several I've spoken to can see it. Easy to see in cinematic mode on black background. I have no idea what he's referring to. Faint and I don't want to know about it. <laughs> faint blue it. spot. Well, you, was it, you saw it? I saw it. Yeah, what? I saw it while oh. I was playing Village. Faint blue spot just I below know, I, eye level. I, I, yeah, uh, you know, I told you you can trick the uh, the the foveated rendering and catch it sometimes. Yeah. Uh, if you do that, do, do you sure you want me to tell you? Because now you'll see it. I don't want to know. Uh, you can talk to the chat. I'm going to cover my ears. Just let me know. Yeah, okay. I'm not covering my. All right. So, if you if you turn your head and you look up while looking down with your eyes really quickly on the bottom border of the visual picture. There was kind of like a light blue border. I saw it a couple of times, actually. Hmm. Yeah. Well, well I, I don't think that that's uh, okay. intentional. Obviously, I think it's some kind of a glitch or something, but I did notice it. Interesting. All right. All right. Well, annoyingly on replay, it's now got captions on it. So I've now got to not look at that as it replays <laughs> when it's talking about it. <laughs> uh, Donald D. with a $50 tip says, congrats, Brian, for keeping hope alive. Thank you very much. You guys are insanely generous uh i don't even know what to do with you except smile and say thanks um shades of gray matter with the canadian five dollar tip says we love you guys you've been a constant source of entertainment and joy and built an amazing community thank you thank you amazing community for being so amazing it really is you guys you've yeah i, I don't know it's all you guys i don't know how i got surrounded by great people it has nothing to do with me i promise you that <sighs> guys how do we wrap up this conversation uh, what, what, what's, what's next for PSVR 2? Well, th this is the thing is like, there are so many games that, and like worlds that we want to experience in right now. Like at the moment we're having to skip through so much, like what a launch lineup, like every game that I've played, there's, there's not been, and look, I, I'm only speaking for myself. I've not played one game yet that I've thought negatively of mm -hmm. like the bar the bottom of the bar. If there are games I don't like as much, I'm like, no, I still want to come back and play it. Like we are so sport for choice. And so I just think it's really, really exciting, regardless of what the five titles are tomorrow. Oh, Jesus. Well, the, state of play. Totally forgot yeah, we had no, a state right? of play this <laughs> tomorrow. That's right. Yeah. Uh, kind of my big takeaway on the day is, is kind of allude, what Miles was alluding to here. It's just how much we have to play now because you know we, we all kind of expected the exclusives to be awesome and w w you know it's easy to say that the ports will have their best version but you don't really fully understand what that means until you get into the headset and get the controllers in your hands and you start to see it so now i'm more excited for the quest ports i'm excited to get into star wars and zombie land and stuff like this uh Having played today uh, and really kind of coming to full realization what these upgrades are going to mean practically while you're playing, um, we just have so much to play now. So much to play now. And, I literally uh, I, have 37 games in my PSVR 2 game right. list. Yeah. 37. Right. Yeah. 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 And what, what do you play next? If you're like me, I mean, I don't want to rush through any of it. Yeah. Like, I want to take my time with it. So what do we do, man? There's so many great games to play. I, I mean, uh, dude, I just want to say that, like, it, we, I, I feel like we very quickly glossed over or, or, or whatever Horizon called the mountain. Um, yeah. I'm just really, really happy that not only is it beautiful, but it gave me definitely the sense of uh, that climbing. My, Miles and I uh, played Zenith. I think it was a Celestial Fortress or whatever that whatever that wow. DLC was. And I swear it was like the lowest polygon count I've ever seen in VR right. ever. Right, seven polygons on the screen, and we're climbing. And I'm like, my knees are shaking, and I'm like, I'm try I'm, I'm like lifting the headset up, trying to breathe, <laughs> being like, so so. VR is already by nature, even in its lowest form, very very convincing for what it does. But man, today when I was climbing in Horizon, and thank goodness, I, and now I'm like really happy that there's so much of it because it's terrifying. <laughs> Same. I love I love all the, I, I personally love all the climbing, even the combat, all the concerns. And by the way, if there's still concerns, I totally accept them. But for me, yeah. the combat style I'm happy with, the, all the climbing yeah. I've been fine with. Um, and, and on that, in terms of the fear that you feel, 
Um, and it kind of goes back to right at the beginning of the conversation about like how many people we're seeing jump into VR for the first time, like the barrier to entry. All those VR games I wanted my parents to try out, but the move controllers were just so against your intuition of like the best way to locate around. My dad, I put him in Horizon Call of the Mountain. He played the entire first like section all the way until like the the, the, the title screens come up without going into anything specific. I didn't give him one direction because for some reason it wasn't coming up on the social screen at that point. Um, I didn't give him one instruction. All the tutorial stuff. And my dad's not a huge gamer at the moment. He used to be, but not anymore. And uh, there was one bit where uh, I could see he was climbing on the vines. And I was like, are you going over the river? He was like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, look down because it's the big waterfall bit. And he went, oh, shit. He went, <laughs> and he was like, let me get let me get over first. And then when he got over, he was like, I felt that in the pit of my stomach. And it was just like moments like that. That is when I love VR most, when I see other people enjoying it, you know, and, you know, seeing Brian's reaction on GT7, um, seeing people just get amazed. It's that shared experience that I love most. And so, yeah, Horizon Call the Mountain, um, I'm just, you know, really hyped about. I think the only thing that's maybe lessened it is because it's been the thing that has been marketed so much like we were kind of expecting it. Um, we knew it was going to be good. Um, whereas there's a lot of titles that, um, you know, Kayak, you know, we thought, yeah, it's three people that have made a really nice trailer. <laughs> oh, shit. This is actually even better than the trailer. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? It's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I 100% I, I agree. I, I think the combat in Horizon was shockingly enjoyable. Uh, I, you know, again, only played the very first moments of it. I can't wait to get into bigger fights more complicated fights but just you know tapping the analog stick to to, to strafe one way or another or uh, the, the whole being in a circle didn't bother me like i mean like i i am excited now that i've started playing it i'm excited to see uh what the rest of the game has in store for me because so far i've just loved being like what's that up there can i shoot an arrow at that and like oh that that's a ladder i could i'll knock down the ladder and able to climb up and now there's a whole other area to explore there's hidden stuff seemingly everywhere in this game with like targets to find and like this is the kind of game you want to take your time and go through slowly and that's exactly how i'm going to play through this i don't know how long it's going to last but i'm excited to do it that's so right and 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 there's also a lot of games that are just great to dive into for people that have never experienced VR before. Like one title I did want to mention today, because I and I, I know that I think Wes unsubscribed from my channel because of it. If I heard it right in my ear, <laughs> but what the bat? I had I'm having a great time with what the bat. It's a stupid game, but it's a fun game, and it is actually a game that I would probably put um, a lot of non VR players into if they came over to hang out. It's a game that you pick up. They're really silly. A lot of them are non-levels. They're just like little jokes. And I've played a solid hour or two into it. And I, I don't know how many more levels there are. There seems to be a lot of content there. But I just wanted to send some love for What the Bat because I know it's uh, the butt of a lot of jokes and like it doesn't take itself seriously. But um, I'm having a, a blast with it. <clears throat> uh, two more tips. Brendan. Casey, Casey with the two dollar tip says, "What's up with Moss Book One and Two pack? I only saw Moss Book Two. Um, it's the PlayStation Store has been kind of a mess. Um, you know, if if you if you're interested in awesome asteroids, you're not going to just see it in the PlayStation VR Two section. Uh, you have to actually search for awesome asteroids or go to the coming soon or uh, recent." newest games and then sort by newest games which is weird that the newest game section doesn't automatically sort by newest games it's the playstation store you guys that's what's going on with moss book one and two it's the playstation store it's a mess and it's never going to get fixed uh so my first recommendation would be use the search bar right actually search type in the thing that you're looking for specifically uh and hopefully that'll solve most of your problems um Giz did any of you say you did it did any of you say you've played it yet on PSVR 2? No. Yeah, no. Yeah. Not yet. No. I'm planning on it. Haven't gotten there yet. There's a lot. There's, I saw a lot of articles saying it's one of the biggest, like, wow in terms of improvement. Like, it really excels with the platform. Wow. So I'm kind of excited to experience that. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got Gizzy underscore 99 with the six euros. He says, one of the silent, one of those silent cats. After three years, it's time to break the silence. I was ex <laughs> I was as excited as when I got my Game Gear 
in the 90s. Oh my wow. god. Wow. From Belgium. Dude, there's another one. I thought I was the only one who bought a Game Gear. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> I found you. <laughs> I found you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I had a Game Gear in the '90s. Remember, I got it. I've got um, Castle, uh, Castle of Illusion, Mickey Mouse, and Revenge of Dragon, which was just Wonder Boy uh, with a different name. Good stuff. X Men, Columns, Columns, Mortal Kombat Two. Yeah, yeah. Lasted took six AAA batteries. They lasted about they, they were one hour. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, you guys. Uh, listen, it wouldn't be a proper games cast, and it definitely wouldn't be West Day. If we didn't do some 20 questions. Now, I've got a little bit of help this time. Wes has a PSVR 1 or 2 game in his head. This is the very first time PSVR 2 games have been included. Uh, we'll see if he takes advantage of that or not. Uh, and then the three of us... I know what us, the first question is going to be. What the, the, yeah, right. <laughs> the, and the three of us have, uh, have, have 20 yes or no questions to figure out what game... That is, I'm so excited to play this because it's always more fun with other people. We still only have six minutes though, so we got to be very, we got to be good with our time, okay? We'll just we'll work together, but we got to work together fast. Are we rotating questions one each? Are we? Like, I, yes, I think that's. I fair. think we can do that. Me, Miles, yeah. AJ, me, Miles, AJ. We'll go right down the line. Okay. All right. All right. Wes, do you have a game picked out? I do. All right. Well then, hey chat, help us out. We're gonna need it. It's more games than ever that it could be. On your mark, get Dez. Go. Can, can you play this game on PSVR 2? Well, of course you can, Brian. I would be an asshole if I picked something <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> yes, you can. All right. My turn. Um, does it have multiplayer? Yes, it does. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> what multiplayer games can you play on PSVR 2? Um, after the fall, Simph, after the fall, ooh, De Synth Riders after the fall. Um, is it? Does it have Snowbreed in it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it does. No. Oh my god, I'm kind of glad it, it, he did say no. Otherwise, this would be super. We might have to do five of these. Yeah, the brass yeah, tacks yeah, here. The no, <laughs> after the fall. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is this uh? Has this developer made other? No, 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 no I don't like that. Uh, I, I, I want to go down the Demio path. Um, Could be Zenith. Demio. Oh, well, okay, how about this? Mind. How about this? Let's narrow it down even further. It's on PSVR one, right? Uh, can this game be also played on PSVR one, Wes? Yes. All right. right. Now we're just looking at it's cross yeah. synth riders here. Um. When ask about um, rhythm miles, maybe that'll help us. Into yeah, I, 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 was gonna, I was gonna say, does, does, does this does this game have combat? No, no. Okay, is it a rhythm game? <laughs> no, not really. Hmm. Sim Friders isn't really. We're gonna get you, you fucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so that I, I fully expect. <laughs> I fully expect that, by the way. <laughs> There's no escaping us. So that gets rid of Pistol Whip. That gets rid of uh, Synth Riders, obviously. Um, <laughs> God, what other multiplayer games are there? We need we need to go down. Oh, oh. Uh, man, Brody in the chat is suggesting Tetris, but that's kind of, that's rhythm, kind of? No, um, no, a puzzle. I mean, okay. Uh, was it, oh, was, was this published by enhanced games by any chance yes it was mm. all right and it res doesn't have multiplayer does it so so uh, i think we might already have our yeah. answer it's humanity <laughs> <laughs> is this tetris effect connected indeed it is tetris effect connected well done amazing which i which well done chat is a joy in psvr2 i haven't played it Super crisp, super clear, nice haptics in the headset. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Amazing. Nice. Very first PSVR 2 game, 20 questions. It's craziness. Craziness. All right, you guys. Again, just a reminder, uh, make sure you subscribe to these guys' channels. They are all in the description below. Click the link. Do the thing. Spread the love. Thank you uh, to everybody who helps this channel run. Jay Meow, who gets us up on podcast services of your choice. Don't forget, you can listen to this on Spotify. Who the fuck has, like... 
19 hours a week to listen to all the games cast. Maybe you want to listen to it while you're driving in your car. It's a good way to go. We also made top 25 video game podcast. Uh, I mean, we are killing it, dude. Like the, the people that we're ranking above are people that like I look up to and like just have always thought were, you know, some of the coolest people in the video game industry. Uh, so thank you very much for making that a real thing, GameCats. We love you so much. Uh, also, Sci-Fi GameCat Henry, who has the worst job on the face of the planet, and that's putting timestamps into these shows uh, after they're over. So thank you to him. Uh, shout out to all of our moderators who make my life easy, not just here, but over on Discord as well. Remember to join us on Discord by clicking the link in the description. Uh, and shout out to our two newest moderators as of today. That's our good friend, Elbert. And our good friend Hibsy, two new moderators, give them a round of applause in the chat. Little do they know, it's just more work. Like I don't, <laughs> don't envy them at all. Uh, but thank you guys for making my life awesome. I love you so much. Um, so shout out to everybody, everybody out there. Uh, this amazing, amazing community that's been with us on this very, very long journey. Uh, some of us thought today would never come. I thought I would never see today. Period. I just thought that something awful would happen. I would never make it here, but here we are. And I'm so fucking happy to be here with all of you guys. All the cats that support us on patreon.com slash without pro games. All the cats who tipped us in the chat today uh, with a special shout out, of course, to uh, the biggest tip I've ever got. Uh, Norman Atori. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, everybody who helped us with 20 questions. Everybody who said nice things during today's show. Everybody who said new members, nice things, new members. Holy crap. We've got memberships. Uh, of course, everybody who sat back, watched the show, didn't say a goddamn word. We know you're out there. We love you just as much. Let's get out of here, you guys. Let's go play some more PSVR 2. Let's go. Happy PSVR 2 launch day. Thank you, Enjoy. Brian. Thank you, Miles. Thank you, Wes. Let's go, cats. My microphone yeah. just fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. What's going on over there? Some stuff. Everything's broken all the time. <laughs> all right, guys. Go what, what are we playing? What are we playing? Who's playing? I'm gonna. Play, I'm gonna go play more Horizon. I think. What are you guys gonna play? Yep, I'm playing all the games. All the games. I'm up for. Nope. I'm up for jumping on a multiplayer with anyone, even though I should be going to bed now. I'm and, up for a multiplayer. Oh, multi! Oh, now. dude, dude, let's let's do some Gran Turismo racing. Let's do it. Let's let's do let's do everyone go get go karts. Yes, I'll set up a I'll set up a lobby called Game Cats. Right, and and All so right. everybody everybody who's listening to this right now, come go go find us on Gran Turismo, <laughs> and, and and buy a go kart, and we'll play together in VR. It's gonna be great. Um. Yeah, yeah like and that. if you want to, if you want to go kart, you just go to the museum, um, Asia, Oceana, Gran Turismo, and then it's the first one there. It's ten thousand credits, nice. and uh, yeah, then you then you go to the multiplayer, not the um, GT Sports. That's like the competitive stuff. Uh, but we'll, we'll be on Discord as well yeah, until we're setting up for so, sure. Uh, join us there. Also, don't forget that Wes is Wes. This is the <laughs> not the last stream that Wes is doing tonight. So go to Virtual Strangers tonight. Wes, what time is that thing starting up? Your next stream. We're probably going to go around 1 a.m. tonight again because people want to have a little extra time to play, myself included. Uh, but yeah, we, we're definitely going to be going live tonight uh, with further impressions. And uh, and we've also got uh, a few Light Brigade keys that we're going to be handing out. So uh, very nice. Good episode lined up. I can't wait to spend more time with Light Brigade. I only played probably 15, 20 minutes. And I just, yeah, can't wait to go back. All right, you guys. I've got, I've got a, I've got a run suspended right now that I'm about to go finish. <laughs> very nice. Good night, cats. We love you so very much. Happy PSVR two launch day. We love you so much. Well.